Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. The Sussexes recorded an episode of the Teenager Therapy Podcast to mark World Mental Health Day. They were joined by three of the five high school student hosts Dale, Kayla and Thomas on the Teenager Therapy Podcast. They described themselves as five stressed, sleep-deprived, yet energetic teens who sit down and talk about the struggles that come with being a teenager. It was recorded earlier this week at a COVID compliant shooting location in Montecito and masks were worn the entire. The Sussexes learned about teenager therapy from a New York Times profile on the hosts and show a few months ago. They were so impressed with the show that they wanted to support their work. They spoke with the teens about removing the stigma around mental health issues and treatment while unpacking how we can all contribute to a healthier world, physically, mentally, emotionally, and holistically. Megan has spoken about her love of meditation multiple times, including on her old lifestyle blog, The Tick. Perry also revealed back in January 2019, he meditates every day. So in a full circle moment, she and Harry led the teen through deep breath exercises to help calm their nerves. Hey everyone, welcome back to Teenage Therapy. I'm Gael. I'm Kayla. And I'm Thomas. And today we're here with a special guest, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. How are you guys? Hi, Hi. I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Harry. <laughs> uh, really happy to be with you guys today. We're doing well. How are you doing? We're doing good. It's a beautiful day. Very excited. Is? A little bit nervous. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely nervous. You do not need to be nervous. Why do you feel nervous? I think we're all nervous, aren't we? Probably, yeah. <laughs> you feel nervous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, I'll get through it. Um, so it's Breathe. fine. Yeah, what do you guys use to not get nervous? Um, I think a lot of it is just, when you walk into environments that are unfamiliar, you don't know what to expect, there's always going to be some nerves. But if you have a sense of what's going to happen, I think if you're prepared and you're really comfortable and what you know to be true, then you're just really being yourself. And at the end of the day, people are people. So whatever room of people you're with, it's still the same you that you bring to the table. So I think once you're clear on that, it's, it's helpful. But if not, it's always a good deep breath. <laughs> It's very helpful. I know. I bet, we I know. Cannot, we cannot do take it. Those. You guys have been doing a lot of activism lately. Um, mm. This episode's in honor of World Mental Health Day. What have you guys been up to in the mental health space? Wow. Um, you know what? I, for us, I don't think it's even confined to mental health. I think the way everything that's happening in the world right now, it's um, the moment that people start to think about mental health, immediately people think about a, a small group of people as opposed to every single mm. one of us. And I think if you could... If you could safely say that 90% of people on planet Earth um, have suffered some form of trauma, some form of loss, some form of grief, and that's different and it varies to every single person, then certainly through, the, the, through this year, through COVID, I think it's probably safe to say that 99.9%, .9%, if not 100% of people have experienced some form of one of those or all of those uh, at, the, at the same time. So I think, you know, now for me, as I said, rather than mental health being focused on the, the people that are struggling, it needs to go much wider than that and to the acceptance and the appreciation that every single one of us have mental health and every single one of us have got stuff going on that we either need to talk about or that we need help with or that we have some form of compassion and empathy for other people that are going through something yeah. similar. Yeah, that's definitely important, specifically right now, because obviously we're in a pandemic mm. and the problem with this is that it has, you know, disproportionately affected different kinds of communities. I mean, myself as an immigrant, it's affected me with a single mother, you know, that that is affects people, it affects people of a lower income of, you know, all kinds of backgrounds. And I think in the teenagers are especially affected because not only do they have that going on, but now there's no school and now their social life is mm -hmm. taken away. Mm -hmm. And personally, I feel like my mental health has put me in a very lonely spot mm -hmm. as you as you get isolated from your friends and you get isolated from that experiences which and I think it's important to talk about it because once we start talking about it people will feel less alone yeah of course I mean I think the other piece of that too not just for a younger age range but for anyone especially to your point during COVID if you're not in school 
then you're finding yourselves on your devices or online more, right? And there's a lot of vulnerability there that I think so many people are experiencing. Yes, it's a great way to connect, but it's also end, ends up being a place where there's a lot of disconnection. You know, I can speak personally to, I'm told that in 2019, I was the most trolled person in the entire world, male or female. Now, eight months of that, I wasn't even visible. I was on maternity leave or with a baby. But what was able to just be manufactured and churned out, it's almost unsurvivable. That's so big, you can't even think of what that feels like. Because I don't care if you're 15 or you're 25, if people are saying things about you that aren't true, what that does to your mental and emotional health is so damaging. And so I think from my standpoint and part of the work that we do is from our own personal experience, being able to talk to people and understand that even though our experience is unique to us and obviously can seem very different to what people experience on the day to day, it's still a human experience and that's universal. We all know what it feels like to have our feelings hurt. We all know what it feels like to be isolated or othered. And I think that's why the work you guys are doing here is so important is that people know that there is someone to talk to so that you're not alone in any of it. We're all figuring it out. Yeah. I mean, it's that level of vulnerability that really creates a sense of community. Hmm. Um, I think in this moment, we're all vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, we all have a lot of things we're dealing with. And the thing we're struggling with is, you know, how do you maintain a positive outlook when you're, um, you know, being in the spotlight? How do you maintain that positive outlook and how do you choose to focus on your own well-being? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Look, it's 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 different for everybody. It is. I'm sure, um, but it's yeah, it, it, it's a lot. There's the there are, there are good days, there are bad days. But I think putting your putting your self care at the as as a priority. Is hugely important because, look, vulnerability is not a weakness. Showing vulnerability in today's world, especially, mm. is a strength. Yeah, and we could certainly see that more from from from, from some uh, some of those sort of global leaders, because it is you know we got ourselves into this very deep hole which we need to come out of. And I think certainly your generation, from what I've seen and what I hear, is that ability to be able to talk about your experiences not only helps you, but is helping hundreds thousands maybe even millions every single time you talk about it to heal and the more we talk about it the more it becomes normal and it is normal and it's not a sign of weakness as i said it's a sign of strength not just vulnerability but to be able to talk about it as well so you know for our our situation is is, is somewhat unique but then every single person's situation is unique yeah and it's, a, it's a and different version of the same different version thing of the same thing you know, for, yeah. for, for, for megan she said on a global scale that's what happened in 2019 but if you're if you're a young girl or a young boy at school and you're and you're that's your world. Mm -hmm. So if you're being attacked or what you're being or bullied, or bullied, whatever, bullied it whatever is online, it may not be the whole world, but it, but it feels will feel the same. like the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know, so. and and I think for us, it's like so. What are the tools, right? What are the things that you do to? to try to feel anchored in who you are. How do you survive that? How do you get through things that are challenging in that way? I think the first is what you guys do. You have to talk about it, right? The more you internalize it, the more challenge all of us face in terms of how can you ever recover from something that you're not willing to speak to. Then separate from that, I think is just, you all, you all find the certain things that work for us. For me, I think journaling is a really powerful thing. It allows me to reflect on where I've come from. And with that comes a lot of perspective, which I think, you know, I think most of us can all connect to the idea that sometimes when you're going through something, it feels like the biggest thing in the entire world. But then you look back at it in a year, and yeah, it was still big wasn't that big comparatively and it's not to diminish what it was it's just suddenly when you have some perspective that is only visible when you have people to check you with that right be it something that you've written down or your friends to remind you like no 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 remember when that happened I think that's really valuable so that everything doesn't become insurmountable so that there's always a way to overcome something but we also we all we all have choice right and I think it's very easy to be sucked in and consumed by negativity. But we all have the choice to be able to cut that out of our lives. You know, hate following has become a thing. You don't need to do that. Just as much as we worry about and concerned and take notice of what we put in our bellies as a diet, the same applies for, for our eyes and for our mind. What we're consuming is affecting us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, for, for me, 
I make the choice not to read it, not to see it, and to remove myself from that, and to very much focus on the uplifting and the and the hopeful side, which most of it I get from your generation, well, <laughs> which, is, which is even greater. But you know, for me, meditation, meditation is key. I never yeah. thought I never thought I'd be the person to to do that. Of course, the importance of just taking a moment and creating that time in your day to be able to、mm. take a breath and actually just focus on the things that really matter. Um, He's the, very the dedicated to it too. He's the very benefits of that are huge, and I think that builds up、uh, a certain amount of resilience. Because the more the more stuff that you get hit with, the sort of the, the, the stronger you become.、Mm. But that doesn't mean that you have to go speak to suffer silently. You can actually talk about it. As I said, you know, for us in our position, it's important to talk about this stuff. Yeah.、Um, especially if we're going to help somebody else. Go. Okay, so it is okay.、Mm-hmm. So you've given me permission to talk about it. It's like, yeah. Mm. And and you've done that specifically a lot. I know a few years back you talked about going to therapy and how talking about your feelings that you had bottled up helped you、mm-hmm. immensely, and that was considered a big game changer in the UK. And I wonder if the reason us specifically as men feel that we're not allowed to talk about our feelings and the traits and the culture of toxic masculinity is like fooling us into believing that suppressing it is the way to go instead of openly showing it, and that suppressing is bravery. Yeah, no, I can, I completely,、uh, I completely see that. But、um, as I said a minute ago, for for me, the sign of strength is 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 talking about it. And anyone who says otherwise, in my mind, are probably some of those people that have got their own stuff that they need to work out. And I and I, what I what I've seen so much over the years is people hiding behind usernames, especially of course on the online space. There are things that are said digitally that nobody would say in person, of course.、Um, But I think there's a lot of projection that happens as well. You know, I think many, many people are, are hurting a lot and are, and are freaking out、um, because、uh, because of the way the world、uh, is and because of sometimes the echo chamber that is being created for them by the online platform that they've chosen to be on. But also, it comes down to control as well. You can control what you see. You can control what you do. So whether it's notifications or whether it's Vibration, ringtone, whatever it is, these things control you rather than taking control. So that's actually a really good thing that people often forget about. We're so conditioned to letting our user experience be defined by the platform or whatever is online, as opposed to take control of your life. You're intelligent people, so turn off the suggested or. Recommended. recommended content. How about you? What would happen if, for a day, everyone just went online to see exactly what they were looking for,、mm. as opposed to what they're being pushed in the direction of? Or if you weren't just mindlessly scrolling and then ending up down some rabbit hole that you weren't interested in, can we actually think about what we would do with all that extra time, and who we would be without someone creating our universe for us? Instead, saying. No, I was just coming on here looking for something really positive. I just wanted to see what my friends were up to, and to stay in that space again—that's like taking the power back and taking control of our lives is a big part of it. So I noticed that you guys say like you have to talk about it first. But did you ever、mm-hmm. feel like hesitant or nervous to talk about something? And like, how are you able to get past that? At a certain point, you just have to be comfortable in your own skin and. And in those moments where you say, "Is it better to not say anything?" Well, what's the alternative? To internalize it, and the adverse effect that will end up having on you, your relationships, your emotional well-being. And as my husband was saying earlier, when you think about the nutritional value of something, you know, when did they start putting nutritional facts about McDonald's or fast food or whatever on the side? And then suddenly, people became really aware of what they were eating. Can you imagine if there was a nutritional Fact sheet on every website or thing that you went on, and it said this is actually really toxic for your health. If you keep eating this every day, it's going to cause this, 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 and this. But that's what we're consuming. We're just digesting it in our minds. We're digesting it in our hearts. That has a really huge effect on us that no one is talking about. So, to answer your question, when you have that moment of doubt of whether you should speak up or speak out. Again, if you sit in silence, I think that can be a lot worse for your health than people give it credit for. Yeah, and I mean not just for your health, but speaking out about it is just combating the stigma just by doing that. And、yeah. I think there's a lot of talk, especially with activists, about remove the stigma. And we, everyone knows, we should remove the stigma, but people don't necessarily are educated as to why. What is the harm in the stigma? 
And what I kind of figured out is that if we as a society approach stigma as in the same way we approach something like puberty and periods, that we have a class for it during school, they tell us what to expect, how we're going to expect it, how we're going to deal with it, and that it's totally fine and normal, we all go through it. Yeah. You know, like when you get your first period, you go to your mom, you tell her, mom, I got my period. She's like, okay, let's go fix it. Let's go take care of it. You're good. Now, if as a society, we did that, but with mental health, and we just said, you know what, mom, I feel like I feel depressed. Can we just go to the doctor, fix it, get out? And if everyone's speaking about it collectively, it makes it feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. And it makes you aware that it's normal. Everyone goes yeah. through this thing. Before we go on, I just want to take a moment to remind you about the importance of meditation. I mean, there's a reason meditation is endorsed by some of the top mental health activists in the world. So download Headspace today and for a free month, visit headspace.com slash code and use code PRTEAMTHERAPY, all one word, to get a free month of Headspace. That's headspace.com slash code and use code PRTEAMTHERAPY, all one word, to get a free month of Headspace. Now back to the episode. Stigma thrives on silence, right? That's, that's the whole point. But then second to that, I think it's really important for people to remember that you don't always have to go to the doctor, right? Mm-hmm. And I think if you let these, if, if you, the longer you stay quiet for, potentially the more they the, the more these these issues these thoughts these these ideas whatever it is that whatever it is unique to yourself that it snowballs but it's you that for a lot of people it's very nerve-wracking going to doctors mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> as we know especially around mental health because a lot yeah. of them might not be able to tell you they don't know what's going on it's the in, it's, it's the invisibility part mm-hmm. that's so of the invisible injury i guess that that, that sort of um, can scare people but it's your friends and complete strangers <laughs> Right? There, there are so many different forms of help out there that, again, for me, the most healthy, strongest, best people that I know are people who talk openly about their mental health. Not labeling it necessarily mental health, just being open. Because that is the way you do it. And then once you, and you see the effect that it has, this domino effect, that once one person talks about it, then within that group of friends and everybody else, and before you know it, you've got mates who you've known for. 15 or 20 years, maybe less so for you guys, <laughs> and suddenly start sharing things that, that they've been longing to tell someone and they don't realize why they're telling you. They're telling you because they heard their friend share something about their life. So it's... it's it it's, takes one simple question. It, that's yeah. an old, but, a, but a genuine question mm-hmm. rather or, than this idea of, how are you doing? Are you okay? Because it's all, everyone, cause everyone's, we live in this sort of text world where we take one sentence and we sort of react to that as opposed to, no, I'm actually asking you how are you doing? How are you feeling? And now, and as of what, the last four years, I guess, I check with my friends and I go back to them and say, no, no, no. When I say, how are you? How are you? Because everyone just goes, yeah, I'm fine. Anyway, and off they go. And it's like, no, I really genuinely want to check in on that. Just the word mental health is really hard for people to say mm-hmm. without feeling like that has some negative connotation. Why don't we just call it health? Because what's happening in your head and your spirit and your body is all the same. It's all connected. And you would comfortably have a conversation about someone's health. So maybe we just expand that. Talk about your emotional health. Talk about your holistic health. And that includes what's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. The point is just talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the goal of the podcast that I realized. Like, you just got to talk about it. It fixes everything. And I mean, Megan, right now, how are you? Like, really, you know? Thank you. Both of you, really. How are you guys? Isn't that funny? It was about a year ago this time that someone asked me that. We were on a tour in uh, South Africa. And on the last day of the tour, man, I was tired. I was just about to give Archie a bath and we were going to... I was exhausted. (laughs) And uh, we were heading home. She was still breastfeeding at the time. Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So a lot of people don't, you know, know just that's like running a marathon. So between every official engagement, I was running back to make sure our our son was fed. And um, yeah, it was that was it was a lot. But at the very end, the journalist asked me, well, are you okay?" And I didn't realize that my answer would receive such a an interest from around the world because I said, well, thanks. It's, It's people haven't really asked me if I'm okay." I didn't think about that answer. I just answered honestly because I was being, I was in a moment of vulnerability because I was tired because there was no presentation. It was just, here's where I am. I'm a mom who is with a four and a half month old baby and we are tired. Mm -hmm. But I think it speaks to the fact that the reason it resonated with people is because everyone wants to be asked if they're okay. And so I would say, 
Today I'm doing really well. Hi. Thank you for asking. Have you been doing good the past few months? I know it's been tough and you have a child. I'm, I'm sure like it's not easy being a mom, especially well, in the spotlight. For any moms right now, my God, for any moms, period, or dads, or single parents, but certainly in COVID, we, have the, we are fortunate. We have the luxury of blue skies and fresh air and green space, a lot of families. Victor, do you want me to hold for that, that sound? I think it adds to it. It adds to the ambiance. Great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, great. Um, I can make bird noises if you want. He loves yeah. birds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not go there. Can, can we hear a bird noise? <laughs> Are we can hearing? Imagine if I just did the most amazing <laughs> night. Like, tweet, tweet. Oh like, my god. Look we'll at right. that. <laughs> um, and Archie loves birds too. Um, but I, I think, look. What it what it picked up on for people was this idea of not feeling heard, or for moms not feeling like people are asking about them. You have a baby, and everyone asks about the baby. I actually think that's par for the course and really sweet. But across the world, there was this ripple of, "Yes, ask me if I'm okay." It's the moms how they're doing. Yeah, exactly. but but also I think it resonated for people beyond just the mom community, whatever it picked up on. And so a year later, I would say. Yes, I am doing well, and the past few months have been layered for everyone. We could, we certainly can't complain. We are fortunate. We all have our health. We have roofs over our heads. Um, but again, I think it's just um, that's look, the 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 unique part of our work is whatever you're going through and whatever other people are going through. It's all relative to, to to that environment that they're in. And I think so much of the, so many of the communities and the individuals that we've spoken to over the lot over this last year, you know, for the majority of people that I've spoken to in London have been stuck, or in the UK have been stuck in high-rise block of flats, mm. you know, unable to see any open grass, any, any open green space. And I think, you know, we've been we felt incredibly grateful and fortunate to be able to have outdoor space where our son can walk his first steps. Mm -hmm. Outdoor space where he can just have sp enough space to run and move around, mm -hmm. like so that you know it's just That's a really a blessing. It's I a mean, that is it's a, huge. it's a huge blessing, and it just makes me. It reminds me of how many people are just stacked on top of each other, and have been for months after months after months, and what that must do to to people's mental health. So it's a it's a it's a real thing. But as I said, every single one of us have got mental health. Everyone, every single one of us needs to prioritize our emotional well being because. If you're not doing it for yourself, then there's a high chance that you're probably uh, affecting those that you love the most. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important part to this as well, because it may feel really isolating as the individual. But my God, when you actually open up and when you start to share it, the, the, the connection you feel with family, friends, complete strangers is extraordinary. As you, got, as, you guys, as you guys, as you guys know, a deep connection. Yeah. you feel suddenly mm -hmm. part of this community. And as I've always said to, to, to Megan before we even before we even met, I had this deep sense of of community once I started to talk about my own mental health because it's a community of people that no matter what, every single person wants to make sure that no one else goes through what they went through. Yeah. yeah. And that is a community that I want to be part of, and that's a community that I think all of us should be part of. Yeah. Before we even wrap up, I would love to know, since you very kindly asked me how I am doing, mm. how are each of you in this moment? What does it feel like? What are, what are the challenges you think are coming up most for you, and what are the things that you feel at peace with? Yeah, can I say, like, on, a, like, on a personal level, but then on, like a, on a global scale? Um, well, before the interview, I was definitely really nervous, um, but just talking to you guys, it just made me feel so much better. And I remember you saying how just talking about something vulnerable in like a friend group or um, just your friends. Last episode, we talked about like uh, death in the family and just talking about it felt so relieving and it felt like it was just a weight off my shoulder. So yeah, I definitely agree with you on that because just something as simple as saying how it affected you really just changes you. Um, but yeah, right now I'm, I'm doing well and I guess I'm just excited and nervous for what's to come, especially with like us being seniors in high school. Yeah. So like the ne next step is, you know, what are you going to do once you leave? Um, for me, obviously I'm still a little nervous, but it's a lot better now. Um, <laughs> In terms of like, you know, being vulnerable, I've always been like a really open person about like what I'm going through and my mental health. 
but recently i felt a little more hesitant on like sharing my problems because you know you're only worrying about yourself and like you're telling your friends about and family about your issues but then you're scared that you're projecting this negative energy or like this burden onto them and it just kind of makes you want to just isolate yourself again so yeah i'm just trying to find a healthy like balance and a way to share but not overshare do you realize how many people feel like that a lot of like, people feel like no, that like actually i mean for the people that are able to feel <laughs> they feel like that and there's so many other people who just would never i think it, i think it takes a sense of a certain sense of a certain amount of bravery to go there to actually really acknowledge how you're actually feeling how does this event or how did that event actually make me feel to the amount of people out there who are worried that your own stuff your own issues are potentially going to somehow land on on, on, on other people i would say there's a way to reframe that too. yeah all, yeah <laughs> because you know oftentimes my two cents for whatever it's worth oftentimes people will feel like you're dumping something on them or maybe that's the burden that you don't want to place on someone like oh god I, they're having a great day i don't want to dump all my stuff on them so maybe you approach it a different way with a friend and you say i'm really worried that i might dump all this on you but that's not what i'm asking for i'm asking if you can and i'm not even asking you to carry this for me mm. could you maybe carry it with me for a minute mm. or can you just hold this with me for a minute as i work through it and that way it's not putting the burden on anyone else but it's the acknowledgement that like this is a lot of weight for me to carry by myself and if you could just assist me in that in this one moment i might be able to push through it and then that way it feels like a lot gentler in a way that you can ask for help that might not seem as as difficult for and, someone to take on and that is, that, is, that assisting is listening mm. like again people feel as though oh, if you you come to me with these issues i'm going to have to have an answer I'm going to have to have I'm going to have to help yeah. you. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't I can't give you advice. I'm not a doctor. And it's like, no, actually I'm, I'm not necessarily asking for a solution. I actually just want you to listen. In those moments really you have two options. You can either try to break through or you could potentially break down. Yeah. But use it as a moment to break through and to connect. I feel better for it. Yeah. yeah. Um I guess going back to how we are. Thank you for asking. It really it does mean a lot cuz once, you know, one person shares something personal, look like at everything, the mm -hmm. conversation it starts um personally, there's definitely a lot of happiness in my life right now. But with that happiness comes sometimes guilt. That do you deserve mm -hmm. to be happy? You know, if you made a mistake in your life, like mm -hmm. do you deserve to forgive yourself? Who gives the role of forgiveness? And I think I've dealt um with that pretty heavily like for a while is do i deserve this happiness and who kind of you know when can i be unconditionally happy and not feel guilty if someone else is sad if the world is sad can you be happy when the world is sad is basically what i deal with internally a lot and how are you reconciling that not sure yeah it's a process it's a process um trying to just find ways to pay back for that and learn about more about forgiveness and that it's important and it's important to talk about it with everyone and deal with your issues so and that they're not mutually exclusive no, no. that the, the things can be happening in the world and you're doing your part to make them better and in that you still deserve joy mm -hmm. and you still deserve to be happy thank Megan, you Megan big h harry <laughs> oh, thank you nice. for coming on thank you for having uh, us talking to us you're going to help so many people no well done you guys keep this up like don't ever stop just thank you keep, just keep like, talking about it and get through every single time you do a podcast i'm sure as i said like yeah thousands of young people just like wow and one the very minimum one thing will resonate with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and they would never have had it explained to to them the way that they just heard it from you guys or from whoever you're speaking to yeah. and you've got to remember that and maybe you may repeat the same stuff but there'll always be one thing that goes wow that and that's really relatable to I me i don't think that you know what it is yeah. cuz oftentimes we'll go into it with an idea of like this this might be the piece this is the golden mm. nugget mm -mm. it'll always be the thing that is the least expected yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing thank you guys thank you thank you, thank you so much thanks for yeah. having amazing. us amazing that's it yay Check out one of our newest videos right here.
plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.